Okay, so it's just a, um, a, a quick test. I've got a new uh, digital camera today. Um, my old small one uh, broke down over the weekend for, for whatever reason. Um, so I went out today and bought another one. Um, this is just checking how, how it uh, performs with the kind of stuff I require of it. So uh, for that, uh, what I'm going to do is do a quick uh, review of this uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this Trumpeter MiG-23 Flogger B uh, kit we've been waiting for for some time, uh, and which turned up uh, this week. Um, <coughs> there were some issues, uh, some issues with the initial releases of this model, uh, in that um, it came with a couple of sprues missing, which contained uh, some of the missiles and uh, launch rails uh, for the R-23 missiles, and also there were some problems with the uh, mould flow on the uh, early canopy examples uh, where the mould didn't quite, uh, the plastic didn't quite meet properly and uh, there were some marks in the canopy. Please say I got mine from Lucky Model <coughs> in Hong Kong uh, this week um, and they have um, apparently had all the corrected parts uh, to add to the model. I had the extra sprues that were required and my canopy is also fine. Um, Interestingly, when the model turned up, the uh, the additional sprues that were required were actually on top of the model, uh, on top of the uh, packaging, whereas the rest were at the bottom of the packaging, so it indicates that perhaps they were added later, uh, before the model was shipped. But whichever way, it all came... <coughs> it all uh, it was all there, present and correct. I have to excuse me, I have got a cold, um, which is uh, causing me quite some, uh, some problems at the moment. Anyway, as I say, this is uh, this is a new MiG-23. Uh, there are lots of sprues in the model. So the first thing I'll show you is uh, obviously the the, uh, the fuselage, the main fuselage sprues here. Uh, very nicely done. Um, I know that there are some uh, some people have noticed some accuracy issues, but overall, uh, it's a very nice model, very nicely produced. It's more or less, as, uh, you know, in terms of accuracy and research, it's scaled down on the 30 second scale model. Which has had generally good reviews. Uh, like I say, one or two inaccuracies, but um, nothing, um, you know, nothing show-stopping. So there's the main fuselage sprues. Uh, very nicely produced. Uh, now there have been photos showing another set of fuselage sprues, which are specifically for the later MLD model. Uh, this is just specifically for the um, M and MF models, the earlier models. So there's the uh, sprue with the, uh, the main fuselage halves. I'm just going to have a look through the. Uh, through the packaging here, from the top fuselage, which is in here somewhere. There we go. There's the um, there's a top fuselage sprue. This uh, adds onto um, the two sides and will trap all the wing and swing mechanism and all that kind of stuff. Two complete sets of air brakes, one for closed and one for deployed, um, and uh, intake splitter parts here as well. <clears throat> um, again, very nicely produced, uh, particularly things uh, around the wing swing mechanism with the uh, large lugs that the uh, MiG-23 has. Um, <clears throat> there's the sprue with the tail and some of the undercarriage parts on it. Um, this is specifically the uh, the earlier MiG-23 tail with the, uh, the large fin fillet that you can see there. Again, um, amongst the uh, the issues that have been pointed out by some people um, are the fact that the uh, rudder dampers uh, should be standing proud of the surface on the real aircraft and um, they're not on this one. Uh, I don't think it's a major deal, some people seem to think it is, but um, I can't see um, any problem there that a few minutes with some uh, some rod and tube won't correct if you, if you feel that way inclined. Um, also it's uh, a, a MiG-23, um, I believe, MF tail because it's got the dual rudder dampers whereas the earlier M's only had one. Um, again, whether you regard that as a, um, a fatal flaw is, uh, is up to you, but I certainly don't. It's a very minor issue. Uh, then we've got the two sprues with the, uh, the wing halves um, and other details on them. Um, there's no... Um, no separate slats or flaps, uh, or leading edge flaps as the MiG-23 had on this model. I'm quite happy with that because I like to portray most of my swing wing aircraft with the wings swept for uh, storage purposes mainly. Um, also it does tend to make the aircraft look a bit sleeker which I quite like. Uh, it does have opened um, 
holes on the underside for the pylons. Uh, MiG-23s could carry uh, a fixed pylon for a drop tank. Um, it was fixed so the aircraft couldn't swing its wings with it in place so it wasn't used um, very often um, but it's there if you want it. Uh, just uh, for further information we've got the one two we've got the four section flaps um, which I think I'm right in saying was um, early MiG-23s, uh, the later MiG-23 MLD and ML switched to a, th a simpler three section flap um, but I'll, uh, I'll do a bit more research into that. The tailplanes are here as well, um, again nicely done. And then we get to the uh, kind of the sub sprues and things. Uh, we've got this sprue here which contains things like the intake splitters, um, the uh, swing wing mechanism cogs there, the uh, intake tunnelling and the rest of the, the, the swinging wing mechanism. Um, it's quite odd in that the uh, when the fuselage halves go together there's an entire top fuselage piece which goes in and this swing wing me mechanism is uh, trapped or glued in there before you add the top part. Um, it's quite a unique construction but um, I'm led to believe it's uh, it works fairly well and there are no fit issues so uh, we'll see when I get around to building this one. Uh, <coughs> engine parts, uh, interior parts, undercarriage parts, things like that on this sprue. Um, GSH 23 gun uh, gun fairing uh, and uh, things like the uh, jet pipes and stuff uh, on this sprue. Um, overall, the level of moulding is uh, is very very nice. There are some small um, additional sprues, uh, which uh, like this one. This is the air intakes um, and uh, no tone there. them back in the box there. Um, <clears throat> the aforementioned uh, canopy, um, like I say I've uh, got an example that's got no mould flow issues uh, with it whatsoever and has also been very well, very nicely packaged so I'm quite happy with that. And the, uh, the windscreen parts are in there also uh, packaged. Uh, <clears throat> and here we have uh, the sprues, uh, the weapon sprues. Um, there's three weapon sprues and you get two of each sprue, so you've got six weapon sprues in total. So if I go through what you get um, in uh, on each sprue, this, this sprue here is uh, dedicated to the R23 missiles and their launch pylons. Um, you get uh, two each of um, R23R um, R and R23T. And the flogger only carried uh, only carried one of each in reality. Um, so you've, uh, based on the fact that you've got two sprues, um, you've essentially got uh, at least six missiles here that uh, can't go on the aircraft. Uh, that's just from the first two sprues. The reason there had to be two sprues in this was because they only included one launch pylon and two halves. You need two launch pylons, therefore you need two sprues. That was one of the sprues that was missing uh, from the initial releases. Uh, there's another sprue here with short range air to air missiles. You've got the radar guided atolls and uh, two styles of um, atoll, the later R13 variants, which uh, they, they look <coughs> um, essentially like AM9 D stroke G models and AM9 um, J models uh, in. Uh, in appearance, so you've uh, got two sprues, each with two of those, two each, so you've got um, a grand total of <coughs> four of the radar guided and four each of two styles of um, infrared guided. So, um, yeah, you've got, um, you know, again, a lot of spare missiles. There's a pair of um, R60 um, missiles, NATO name AFID on this sprue. Uh, the MiG-23 could carry up to four of those on under fuselage launchers, uh, either single or dual launchers. <coughs> and uh, you've also got two R73 missiles on this sprue. <coughs> Do excuse me, um, this coal has uh, really caught me out. Uh, where was I? Yeah, there's uh, two R73 missiles on this sprue as well. Uh, fairly nicely done. Um, Again, not applicable to the uh, MiG-23, it, it never carried them. The later proposed upgrade, the MiG-23-98, uh, was equipped uh, to carry them, but that never sold to anybody, so um, the missile has never actually seen any, uh, any service in, uh, in that form. And then the last weapon sprue was um, 
this one which uh, contains um, a couple of styles of um, missile launcher um, and the uh, dual um, R60 launcher for the under, under the fuselage, the wing drop tanks here and the under fuselage drop tank so <coughs> you've got uh, one under fuselage drop tank was all that it could carry so you've got a spare one of those and you've got two of these um, uh, I'm not sure how big they were, I think they were probably 800 litre under, few, under wing tanks that were never used. So there's, there's all the sprues, um, including the duplicates. Um, decals cover one option um, in this particular boxing. It's a very early early 70s MiG-23 with um, the bought number of yellow 49. Uh, quite a simple decal sheet, but everything there for that version, if you should so desire. And a very comprehensive uh, sheet here uh, for um, weapon stencils and the like. <coughs> Trumpeter decals generally pretty good. They go down. I've, I've found they go down fairly well, um, adhere well, and um, and conform to surface as well. So I've never had a problem with them. There is uh, a small etch set containing things like the uh, suction relief holes for the intake splitter plates and what look some uh, air brake parts and also um, a complete seat harness. <coughs> Although anybody who knows anything about the MiG-23 and the KM-1 seat will be looking to replace the seat as the kit one is uh, pretty poor to be honest. Um, and then you've got a colour uh, uh, a colour um, painting guide there covering one aircraft which is in uh, overall pale grey as I said from the early 70s and uh, then the other side covers the uh, painting of, um, of all the missiles um, uh, only covering the missiles that the MiG-23 could actually carry so the, R, um, the R-73 missile isn't covered on this sheet so they genuinely are spare uh, <coughs> Instruction sheet there, um, fairly typical trumpeter instructions. They're um, simple and concise and uh, <coughs> uh, pretty clear, so uh, there shouldn't really be any problems with those. One thing I'd have picked up this week um, off of eBay, off of somebody in Poland, is the uh, Master have produced a, um, a set of uh, pito tubes for various scales of 23 flogger. I've purchased one here the, um, for the earlier model floggers. Um, it's turned brass. Uh, it's absolutely exquisite. It's one of those little finishing touches to a model. Um, I think it's uh, a few pounds well spent for the uh, finished appearance. So that is going in the box and will be used um, when I build the model. Frankly, uh, these days I either make my own pitot tubes out of um, <coughs> needles turned down in my Dremel or um, I buy aftermarket brass ones. I did actually drop a very small sprue down the side here, so if you bear with me, I'll try and... There we go. One sprue that I didn't, <coughs> haven't mentioned yet because it escaped uh, <laughs> before I started the, uh, the review. This sprue here contains two jet pipes, one open and one closed. Now I'm hoping um, that at some point one of the resin manufacturers is going to get on top of the, um, the MiG-23's jet pipe one of the distinctive things about the MiG-23's um, afterburner petals is that when the uh, pressure bleeds off after the landing, all of the petals droop, so the, the top side um, petals on the aircraft look like they're in a closed position, while the petals on the bottom of the pipe droop down and look like they're in the open position. So it gives a whole, um, it gives a whole tailpipe a drooped appearance, almost like it's a vectoring nozzle. Um, and it's quite one of those things to me that is very distinctive on the MiG-23 and hasn't been covered in this model. I, I don't really blame them for not covering it, it's one of those little oddities if you like. Um, but I would like to see perhaps um, in the near future one of the um, resin manufacturers have a go at that because that would make a, that would be a very nice addition to this model <coughs> for a parked aircraft to make it look um, you know, suitably at rest with all the, um, all the jet pipe um, panels drooping. So anyway, that's, um, as I say, that's the Trumpeter MiG-23M. They have already announced the MiG-23MF for early next year. <coughs> I'll be very interested to see if there's any different sprues in that model. Um, because what we have here, although it's uh, billed as a, a MiG-23M, Flogger B, is to all intents and purposes also a MiG-23MF. Um, you could certainly build an MF from this model, um, pending the arrival of decals. Um, that's a decision I'll make in due course. 
but clearly there are uh, other variants to come. One would like to um, hope that the ML or MLD is uh, here sooner rather than later, the lightweight, uh, if you like, dog fighting flogger. Um, and who knows, perhaps even things like the MiG-23BN right through to the MiG-27 family would be uh, very welcome um, in this scale. <coughs> Very impressive model uh, overall. I'm very happy with it and look forward to building it. Uh, I think it's going to be about £35 in the UK when it hits the uh, shops. I got this from Lucky Hobby in Hong Kong for somewhere around £30 including postage. So, you know, a significant saving. When, when you bear in mind if I bought this in this country, I'd have to buy it from a mail order retailer and pay postage anyway. So I'd be nearing £40. Um, including postage for this model. Uh, I've managed to get it for around 30 direct from Hong Kong. So that's a decision for the individual to make, but honestly I don't see why anybody would uh, purchase in this country if they've got access to a credit card or PayPal. Um, <clears throat> look around online and uh, make your decision based on uh, where you can uh, get the model cheapest is my advice. But I hope that's of some use to you and um, I'll catch up with you uh, in, in the very near future.